والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ان شاء الله ان توديز توك regarding the life of uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an uh, we will uh, continue the almost our last part of uh, Abu, uh, last part of the life in Medina while Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was still in this in this world and uh, under the leadership of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Medina life today we will talk about a couple of uh, very important incidents uh, of the history of Islam and inshallah we will talk about the role of abu bakr as siddiq radiyallahu an in those specific events so today we will cover inshallah if time permits this is my goal we'll talk about the fatah makka or the conquest of makka inshallah then we'll talk about the battle of hunain and uh, the siege of taif and uh, then we'll talk about ghazwa uh, tabuk and uh, the, the last uh, or the, the first hajj actually uh performed uh in islam uh, when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet under the leadership of abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu an so this is the goal inshallah and uh, we'll go over these uh, specific events and uh, uh, then we'll cover uh, we'll continue on next week inshallah so today is the ninth talk of the series on the life of abu bakr siddiq when it comes to this, so we talked about uh, uh, quite a bit last week uh, about the treaty of hudaybiyah and uh, according to that treaty uh, the point uh, some of the articles of the uh, treaty were discussing the issue of that there will be a ceasefire between the quraish and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the next coming 10 years and uh, part of the treaty was that as well whoever goes along with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then he will be part of the treaty as if uh, he's from the side of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and anyone who goes to the side of Quraysh, they will be, or uh, they will sign the treaty in the same way as they are part of the Quraysh. Now, uh, when we talk about that, Banu Bakr was one of the tribes that enter into the alliance with the Quraysh, and they were the allies of the Quraysh from the uh, from from the past as well. Uh, and uh, on the other side, Banu Khuzaa, Banu Khuzaa. Uh, they already were, uh, they had friendly relationship with uh, the Muslims and they took the side of Rasulullah so they, they became part of the treaty from the side of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That treaty lasted actually less than two years. So what happened was uh, uh, Banu Bakr, they, they had the issues with Bani Khuza'a for a long period of time and uh, what they did was they attacked actually Banu Khuzaa and Banu, uh, uh, Banu Khuzaa and uh, they did that during the night time and they thought of it if they do that during the night time nobody would know and they will get by but the treaty stays there and they will get by and, and on the other hand we see that uh, uh, the Quraysh they made uh, another huge mistake of they thought of it this is a night time and nobody would know that uh, they became, they not, they not only allowed Banu, Banu Bakr to attack Banu Khuza'a, but also they actually uh, supplied the arms also. So they uh, participated in a sense in that uh, attack on, uh, but, uh, uh, on Banu Khuza'a. Now, they, they killed quite a, a few people of Banu Khuza'a, but it happened to be one of the members of the Banu Khuza'a, uh, he was able to uh, to, to escape that attack and he made it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name was Ahmad bin Salim and he made it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, he, he told Rasulullah how Banu Bakr attacked and also the participation of Quraysh in the attack against the Banu Khuza'a. And the response to Rasul, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uh, to Amr bin Salim was uh, that Nusirta ya Aba, uh, Aba Amr bin Salim that you will be supported you are supported O uh, uh, Amr bin Salim now when this incident happened uh, and when, uh, when uh, uh, Abu Sufyan found out about this incident he was very angry 
at the same time, he was sad also, uh, uh, or scared, if you want to call it, because he was angry at the actions of the Quraysh, that uh, what they did, of course, uh, about Banu Bakr, but Quraysh, why they participated. Uh, but at the same time, he also was scared because he knew the consequences of that. And especially if somebody from Banu Khuza' make it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, uh, uh, and informed him what exactly happened. And uh, his fear was correct, actually. And uh, as, as, as I just mentioned, Amr bin Salim, he made it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in this panic, Abu Sufyan, he actually hurried up and he wanted to uh, to make it to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, make sure he wanted to firm the treaty of Hudaybiyah. So he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he uh, asked for making sure the treaty is firm and uh, he extended it in terms uh, uh, the, the terms that they signed up for. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was already aware of what happened with uh, Banu Khuza. So he asked him, is that what, uh, uh, he asked him actually, oh, uh, uh, when, when Abu Sufyan came and he said to Rasulullah Sallam about this, so Rasulullah Sallam said, is that why you came, that you just want to make it firm that the treaty is going on? Or did you do anything, he mentioned, that gives you a cause of worry? So Abu Sufyan replied, I seek refuge with Allah, we are upon our covenant and we are abiding by the terms of the treaty we agreed upon on the day of Hudaybiyah. And we are not changing or modifying the terms of our agreement. And uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not give him any response for this. So Abu Sufyan got, uh, he, he was worried. He realized that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not uh, uh, reaffirm the treaty of Hudaybiyah. The treaty was made fine, but he did not re-accept it again. That's what Abu Sufyan was trying to do with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he knew that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, uh, uh, he was Sadiq Wameen, and he, if he is able to get some approval from him, he, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will abide by his words. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do that here. He just did not give him any response about what he was asking for. Now Abu Sufyan started going to different Sahaba to get some uh, favor in his, uh, 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 some opinion in his favor. Now, he went to different Sahaba, and one of the Sahabi right away he went to was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. As we talked about in the case of Uhud also, that uh, Abu Sufyan was very well aware of the leadership among the Muslims. Meaning, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu, Abu Bakr was a very clear, unique leader among the Sahaba. And the, it, was, it was clear for, for, for them, for, even for the Kuffar, that uh, uh, from the stature of Rasul Abu Bakr, that he is the leader after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after that, he went to Rasul Abu Bakr Siddiq. Now, he was hoping to gain his sympathy now, but Abu Bakr's response was very, uh, uh, very tough, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and he uh, he actually got a taste of anger and wrath from Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr said, "He whom the Prophet Sallallahu defends, meaning whoever Rasulullah Sallallahu I will defend by Allah. Were I to find a small ant that was fighting against you, I would help against you." So that was a response of Abu Bakr. Very uh, straightforward, very uh, uh, very tough. Uh, and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an was not even aware uh, at, uh, of the situation that Banu Khuza had been attacked by Banu Bakr at this point. Um, and uh, uh, he was not uh, aware of Rasulullah sallallahu actually when he found this about what is what happened to Banu Khuza, he had uh, ordered to uh, prepare the army. Now. Abu Bakr, he went to Aisha radiallahu anha. Uh, and by the way, when Rasulullah started uh, preparing the army to go towards Mecca, he did not mention Sahaba that which direction they are going to. And that was a secret. And at this point, and when they were preparing. And so Aisha radiallahu anha, Rasulullah told her to prepare the food for the journey of Medina to uh, Mecca. And he told her, that not to tell anybody about uh, that Rasulullah SAW is going in the direction of the Mecca. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he was in Aisha, he saw her preparing food and uh, uh, things for journey for Rasulullah SAW. He asked, oh Aisha, 
why are you preparing uh, 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 this food? And Aisha, because of what Allah told her not to mention anything about this journey, she stayed silent. Now, Abu Bakr kind of, uh, he uh, became more curious about this now because he see the army, uh, so she's preparing something and there's a preparation for army going on, what's going on, he wanted to know. So he said, perhaps Rasulullah intends to attack the Romans. Aisha stayed silent. Now, he said, perhaps Rasulullah is preparing to attack Najd. She still stayed silent. Now, he said, maybe, he is trying to attack Quraysh. Now Aisha is still stay silent. Now, see, there's a very important lesson here to understand. Aisha radiallahu anha was directed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to break the secret to anyone. Since he was told, she was told not to mention to anybody, she did not mention even her own father because that was a command from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's an important lesson for us Muslims to understand as well. Whatsoever a secret, whatever you are trusted with, it's an amana, and you have to protect this amana. Even that could be defending your Muslim brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, we find sometimes uh, our own Muslim brothers and sisters are willing to give up their own Muslim brothers and sisters in many cases. And this is, we're talking about Aisha radiallahu anha, is talking to the father Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anha, about whom Rasulullah sallallahu said the, 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 the most he loved was Aisha. And then it was asked, what, what about the men? And he said, the father of Aisha. These were the people that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loved the most, and even them among each other, how they were interacting with each other, subhanAllah. It's not that she did not trust Abu Bakr. This is called following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So we have to abide by the commands of Allah and his messenger, no matter what the situation, uh, is, what the situation is. This is how uh, we, we have to fulfill uh, that uh, the covenant Allah has with, that has with us and we have made the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we have taken, we take the shahada, wa shadu an la ilaha illallah, wa shadu anna muhammad rasulullah. This, this is a covenant. This is, a, we are bear, we bear witness. There's nobody worthy of worship except Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, is the messenger. So uh, that, that is part of that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that we have to make sure that we keep the secrets to ourselves if we are ordered to. Okay, so now the, the, this is what happened between uh, Aisha radiallahu anha and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. So then Abu Bakr, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked a question, similar questions to him now. He asked Rasulullah, uh, perhaps you in intend to attack Romans. He said, no. Then uh, Abu Bakr asked him, are you intending to attack the Najd? He said, no. Then he said, uh, Abu Bakr showed a little confusion here. And uh, he said, are we going to, uh, are you attacking Quraysh? Rasulullah said, yes. Then Abu Bakr said, aren't we in that uh, uh, treaty with the Quraysh? Referring to Sulah Hudaybiyah, the treaty of Hudaybiyah. Rasulullah said, haven't you heard that news? The, when this news reached to you, Abu Bakr, about what Banu, Banu Ka'ab, Banu Ka'ab was one of the, uh, the clans of the Khuza. So he said, haven't you heard what Banu Bakr did with Banu Ka'ab? And here about what the Quraysh had done also, meaning the Quraysh has, uh, supported them. So Abu Bakr understood that it was, uh, uh, that it was a time for Quraysh to pay for their treachery now. So now a massive army was mobilized. Now, this army was so massive. Uh, it's, a, it's a good reminder for us to understand here. First of all, Abu Bakr, another point first. Abu Bakr, he did not push around his daughter to give the, uh, spill the secret out. And Aisha, radiallahu anha, she did not mention anything Abu Bakr. Now, Abu Bakr went to the source, Rasulullah asked him, and then uh, uh, he found uh, uh, what the information was. But afterwards, the army that was prepared, uh, some of the reports talk about that, that all the people from Ansar and Muhajirin, they actually participated in the uh, in this battle, and number of people, and not only the Madi from the Medina, but also the tribes uh, outside the Medina as well, the tribes who were Muslims. Now, number of Muslims who uh, who got prepared to uh, go for this uh, battle or conquest was about ten thousand. Okay, so about ten thousand. Now, 
compare this number of 10,000 with the 1,400 Sahaba who went for uh, the Umrah uh, about uh, less than two years ago when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah happened. And this is called the farsightedness uh, from Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, he's Alim al ghaib He knows everything. And of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he mentioned to him, this is the clear victory. This is the Fatha Mubina that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala decreed for the Muslims. And we can see that, that how the number, which was 1400, that was going to perform the Umrah became 10,000 in less than two years that was going to attack Medina now. SubhanAllah, uh, with less than two years, that number went from 1,400 to 10,000. Now, after that, uh, uh, Muslims were able to uh, enter into Mecca. And uh, 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 as we have talked about that, we will not go into the whole detail of each event. We were talking about more from the concise aspect of the life of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. And Abu Bakr, he went along with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the uh, uh, Muslims entered into Mecca and they were able to open Mecca for, 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 for Islam. After, right after Mecca, uh, Muslims actually, they moved towards uh, Hunayn. So battle of Hunayn occurred. And this battle, Muslims actually, uh, within a very short period of time, Muslims were still in Mecca after the Fatah Mecca, and they, uh, this was the uh, eighth year of, uh, of the Hijrah, the month of Ramadan. And uh, uh, in Shawwal, they were moving towards Hunayn. Now, when uh, uh, Yom Hunayn happened, the day of the Battle of Hunayn happened, now the Muslims army went from even 10,000 to 12,000 because there were people who started entering into folds of Islam in Afwaj, right? Like Allah Azza wa talks about that. إِذَا جَاءَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ So they, they, you will see that, that, uh, that the victory of Allah Azza wa when it came, the people start entering into Islam in multiple folds, in, in groups, in the afwaj, in folds, uh, in groups. So now this number went from 10,000 to 12,000. Now Muslims were, there, there were some of the Muslims, they showed some arrogance about this. Now today, who's going to beat us? We are 12,000, who's going to beat us? And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions about this day. And that day became very, uh, uh, very tough for the Muslims at one point. And the Muslims learned a very huge lesson that it's not the victory that comes from the number. It's not the victory that comes from your uh, strength or material that you have. Victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... Uh, if we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, it's not the number that will bring the victory. Allah will bring us the victory. Allah is the one who help, uh, the, help us. And this is one of the lessons that Muslims learn at that time. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about Hunayn as لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَا كَثِيرًا وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنْ إِذَا عَجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ فَلَمْ تُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ ثُمَّ وَلَّيْتُمْ مدبرين. Truly, Allah has given you victory on many battlefields. And on the day of Hunayn, when you rejoice at your great number, but it availed you nothing. On, and, and the earth, vast earth as it was, became very, I mean, the, the word uses, وَدَاقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضِ That uh, it became very narrow for you. Uh, uh, and uh, what happened on the day of the Hunayn was that uh, Muslims, as they, some of them showed this, uh, uh, what I call it, arrogance about the number they were. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach them a lesson. And when they were going through the valley, and they, they started throwing uh, arrows at the Muslims, the Muslim army uh, for, from, from the high, higher place. And uh, the Muslims, they got terrified. Sudden, the sudden attack that they were not expecting while they were going through a narrow, uh, narrow valley, they started fleeing away from the battlefield. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very bravely remained steadfast there. And he was calling people. There were very few people they stayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Most of the people ran away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he said, oh people, where are you? Come back to me. I am Rasulullah. I am Muhammad ibn Abdullah. 
and the O people of Ansar, I am slave of Allah and His Messenger. And uh, around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of course, one of the person who stayed, uh, stayed with the Sayyid Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, even in this situation. And Al Abbas, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He had a very uh, a thunderous voice, very huge, very loud voice. So Rasulullah said to him, O oh, Abbas, call out, O oh, people of Ansar, O oh, people of Al Sumra, Sum, uh, uh, Samura, people of Samura, this is the name of the tree under which the Sahaba they took the pledge, which is we're talking about the uh, Baytul Rudwan. And uh, uh, he was saying, uh, he was call, called them up and asked him to follow Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah. Now, Upon that, slowly and gradually, people started coming back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Muslims were okay, they did came they did come out victorious at the end of the day. But in the beginning, it became very tough for the, the Muslims. Now, on that day, Abu Qatada, one of the stories mentioned about Abu Bakr is that Abu Qatada radiallahu an saw a Muslim, and he was engaged in a man-to-man -man combat with an enemy soldier. And in the meanwhile, he saw another mushrik. He was trying to sneak behind Abu Qatada, Abu Qatada uh, and attack him. Oh, sorry, one, uh, not Abu Qatada. He was trying to attack the Muslim. So Abu Qatada was watching that. So when Abu Qatada said, said Allah, and he saw that, he right away, he went and attacked the guy who was trying to uh, snuck behind uh, that Muslim. And he, he cut his hand. But when he cut his hand, he was actually, uh, he held up to Abu Qatada and he was very tightly squeezing him, uh, as the report says, like a bear. He was uh, like a bear hug. So he was uh, holding him up like this. And Abu Qatada, he could not do anything until because of the injury that he caused on that mushrik, he st his grip started getting looser, even though Abu Qatada was actually choking at that point. So he's, at the moment his grip started loosening up, he attacked him and he killed him. Now, later on, about Abu Qatada radiallahu an, uh, situation what happened was this, that uh, in general uh, in, in, in Islam, when you are in a battlefield, the way it works is whoever has uh, uh, killed this other soldier, whatever is on the soldier, that can belong to him. So that could be a spoil of war from that specific soldier that could be his. So that's the judgment of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "But you have to bring a witness to say that this was yours." So now Abu Qatada, he couldn't, uh, he 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 did he could not have the witness. Now he did not have the witness for this uh, that he is the one who did that. Uh, and then one of the but he mentioned the whole story what happened. So another Sahabi he said that that this specific person Abu Qatada is talking about. Okay, his spoils belongs to him. He has them. And he would like to keep it. Now, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, even though he is from Quraysh, and the one who was who had that uh, uh, the, the the spoils of war was also from Quraysh, but Abu Qatada is from Ansar, from the uh, from Ansar. So now Abu Bakr's response right away was no, let him not give it to a weak person from Quraysh. Uh, where he leaves a lion from the lions of Allah, referring to Abu Qatada radiallahu an, who fought for Allah and his messenger. So Rasulullah so sallallahu alayhi wa stood up and gave the weapons to Abu Qatada. Now, see, the, it's an interesting thing, even though Rasul Abu Bakr was from Quraysh, but he stood up for uh, Abu Qatada. Uh, not, so he, he, he put all these kind of asabiya kind of uh, mentality of, it belongs to my tribe, so I'm going to help him. Or he, my person from my tribe, the one from Quraysh, he should get it. He did not went along with that. Rather, he he got the right for Abu Qatada, and actually, he made this statement in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted that uh, statement. Another statement, another incident was that Rasul uh, that happened with Abbas ibn Mirdas. He is he was a poet and. Uh, uh, he actually uh, was from the Muslim side, and after the spoils of war was uh, distributed, uh, he uh, he started saying things about that he did not get uh, enough share, and he even said things about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard this, um, uh, one thing to remind you 
Rasulullah was not the one who was good in poetry or he was interested in poetry. Okay. And hence, Rasulullah just said to the Sahaba, uh, go to him and cut off his tongue for me. Now, cut off his tongue does not necessarily mean literally cut off his tongue. And Sahaba understood that, that Rasulullah was not commanding them to go and cut off literally the tongue of Abbas bin Mirdas. So he, uh, Sahaba went and they gave him more and more and more enough wealth to him that uh, from the spoils that uh, he got happy now. So now when he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now, uh, and after that, by the way, now he started saying good poetry in the favor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and when he came, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quoted one particular offensive line of the poem that he said, and helping, uh, thus helping Ibn Mirzas co- uh, recall his own words. So when he quote, quoted the, 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 the poem, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he flipped the last two words uh, of one of the lines. And uh, Abu Bakr understood that he was good in the uh, in poetry and stuff, so he right away saw the mistake, and he made the correction to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Abu Bakr, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it doesn't change much. And Abu Bakr he knew that it does make a difference in the poetry. And upon the Rasulullah Abu Bakr amused about the the, the this kind of a uh, of course this is not a sin kind of a mistake we are talking about. This is reciting the poetry. And upon that, Abu Bakr made a very interesting uh, statement. And uh, that statement actually uh, is in, in, a, in an amusing way. He reminded that for sure Rasulullah, he said, I bear witness that you are indeed uh, as Allah described you to be. And he recited these verses. وَمَا عَلَّمْنَهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ in huwa illa dhikru wa Quran mubin, and we have not taught him Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam poetry, the shahr. Nor is it uh, uh, is it meat for him. This is only a reminder and a plain Quran. So the, uh, see, he mentioned that in a way that look, Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa taala did not taught did not teach him the poetry, and this Quran is not poetry, and this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought. Okay, now. So that's about uh, the incident of Hunain. After that, the, the siege of Taif happened. And this ta- siege was not as successful as uh, Sahaba and Rasulullah Sallam had against the, uh, whether it was the Khaybar or uh, 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 Quraida and, and, and other tribes that Rasulullah Sallam did of the Yahud. Now here, the, the siege went on for a long period of time. Some of the reports talk about, about 40 days. Um, whatever the number of days was, it was long enough that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to withdraw from that uh, from from some siege. But during that, actually, they were throwing the arrows from their uh, 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 fortresses. Now, when when they threw that, some of the Muslims got hurt. Some of them actually were martyred also. And one of the people who was martyred during this siege was the son of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu an, and his name was Abdullah bin Abi Bakr radiyallahu an. Uh, uh, and this is the same Abdullah, the one who helped Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr during the time of uh, uh, the Hijrah. Now he did not die right away. He was hurt with a with an arrow. Now he actually uh, after that he uh, he he, pa- he passed away from the dunya from the same wound that was occurred because of the destiny of siege. In the time right after when Rasulullah sallallahu passed away from the dunya, and Abu Bakr was the Khalifa at that time, he passed away at, uh, right after Rasulullah sallallahu passed away. Not 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 too long after that. And when Abu Bakr was the Khalifa, and uh, a, a delegation from Thaqif came, and uh, Abu Bakr still had that arrow, that he uh, uh, the, the, the 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 one that his son was killed with. So he, uh, um, he showed this uh, arrow to the people who came. And one of the people, uh, he actually, um, uh, he, he recognized the arrow. And uh, uh, Abu Bakr asked him, do, do you know this arrow? And he said, yes. And he said, he's the one who sharpened it and he made it. And he said, he's the one who threw the arrow, meaning he's the one who 
uh, uh, who killed the son of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Now, it was a sad event for Abu Bakr. And uh, it, it, it hurts to see the person who killed your son was in front of you. But Abu Bakr, the response was very powerful even at that time. And he said, he basically uh, said that you are the one that caused his son to enter into Jannah. And Alhamdulillah, that his son did not become the person who would, would have entered through you into the hellfire or put you cause, become the cause of to go into the hellfire because he was a kafir at that time. So hence, his, actually, he looked at the person as a mean for his son to enter into Jannah. Uh, because now he became a Muslim, the guy who was uh, who was there with the delegation. Now, after that, uh, Rasul Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, he uh, participated in uh, in the Battle of Tabuk, and uh, in the Battle of Tabuk, uh, this was uh, after the Fatah Makkah happened, and Muslim start, uh, people start entering into fold of Islam in afwaj, in groups, huge groups, and that's why that year was referred as a year of delegation. Uh, right after Fatah Makkah. Um, delegations mean <coughs> the big number of people were entering into fold of Islam. Now, when the Tabuk started, because the purpose of the Tabuk was the Romans was became, became a threat. All the Yahud were, ta uh, were been taken care of, uh, the Mushrikeen were taken care of now, and uh, 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 now the, these uh, Romans became a threat for the Muslims because they were the one of the two superpowers that existed in, at that time. So they were the superpowers of that time. There's not a small power we're discussing here. Now, when, uh, and they were causing problems to the Muslims. There was a battle happened between Muslims and uh, them, Mota before. And now what happened here was they, uh, uh, they, they were causing problems in the borders of, uh, uh, of the, uh, the state that Rasulullah was ruling. And uh, uh, any one of the, and if some of the people from them, the Christ Christendom, they were becoming Muslims, they were actually killing them as well. So on the other hand, they were also attacking Muslims here and there. So Rasulullah so wanted to take care of that threat as well. So he gathered a huge army. This is in the ninth year of Hijrah. Now look at the size of the army. Now the size of the army became 30,000. So within three year period of time from Treaty of Hudaybiyah, 1400 Muslims were going to perform the Hajj al Umrah, and now the army strength became 30,000 in about three years period of time, less than three years. Now, uh, when uh, Rasulullah so started, of course, this is a huge army, it was a long distance uh, up north and uh, from the Medina, and they had to travel a long distance. And so 30,000 people have to have their belongings and the food and all those things they have to take with them. So that, that kind of army, no matter which time of the world we're talking about requires a lot of preparation and wealth and all those things. So now Rasulullah he started asking the Sahaba to donate. And this was one of the, the very, uh, uh, Rasulullah was asking uh, Sahaba to be generous here. And, uh, and Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an, he was one of the most generous people, uh, especially, especially in Tabu. Uh, and inshallah, when we talk about the life of Uthman, we'll discuss that in detail as well, these events. But today, we talk about Abu Bakr, so we'll stick with uh, what Abu Bakr's uh, part was. Now, when this was going on, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, who was always trying to, uh, you know, um, do, comp do competition with Abu Bakr, wanted to exceed past Abu Bakr. And uh, he was very happy. He said, today, he was thinking, today, I am going to beat Abu Bakr about when it comes to uh, bringing something for, 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 for Tabuk to in, the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he brought the belongings, so Allah asked, did you leave anything for your home? And Omar's response was, uh, yes, the same as what I'm giving you, I, I, I have uh, left for home as well. Upon which, uh, after that, Abu Bakr came. And now Abu Bakr brought the belongings, so Allah asked the same thing to him. Did you leave anything for your family? And the response of Abu Bakr was, he left the name of Allah and his messenger for his family. And when Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu an, he saw this. He said, I will never, I will never outdo you in anything to Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu an, subhanallah. And this is the, uh, the, the this is one of the, the, the things that you realize about the life of Abu Bakr. All these things Abu Bakr Siddiq did in his life, you don't find him, he's trying to compete with anybody. Without 
trying to do competition, he was miles and miles ahead of the rest of the people, the Sahaba. So he was always ahead in, you find him everything in, in general. So like one of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallam talks about it one, one day Rasulullah Sallam asked that uh, did anybody wake up and intend for fasting? And uh, Abu Bakr said he did. And then uh, he said, did anybody uh, give anybody sh uh, charity? Abu Bakr said he did. Then he said, did anybody attend the janazah? He said he did it. And then Rasulullah Sallam asked, did anybody uh, attend somebody who was uh, sick? Abu Bakr said he did it. Subhanallah, and he, same day he has done all those things that Rasulullah was asking and Rasulullah uh, uh, was amazed. And he, he said, anyone who has all these qualities like this, he uh, uh, he uh, he mentioned about, uh, I forgot the, what the wordings were, so I'm not going to say something. So, uh, but uh, there's something good he said about a person who has all these, uh, uh, all these sifat, all these characteristics in him. So that, that, that's this is how Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an was in general, and inshallah uh, we will talk about uh, some of the qualities uh, putting together as a whole uh, later on someday inshallah. Um, let me see how we are with time. So uh, about the Hajj, I'm going to stop for the Hajj. I will not discuss the part of the Hajj today, uh, as we have already taken more than half an hour. Uh, so inshallah, if uh, if there is any questions or comments regarding uh, what we have covered today, which was basically we covered today the, the Fatah Mecca, the conquest of Mecca, and the Battle of Hunain, in, in which uh, Abu, Abba, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, uh, he responded to Abbas bin Mirdas's uh, poetry issue that happened between him and Rasulullah sallallahu And he also made the judgment about uh, Abu Qatada radiallahu an regarding the spoils of war. And Abu Bakr's uh, participation in the siege of the uh, of the Taif. He was one of the participants and uh, his son was martyred in uh, in the siege of the Taif. Uh, he passed away after a few uh, Rasulullah uh, uh, passed away, but uh, he he passed he died of the same uh, he passed away of the same uh, wound that he got in Taif. And also we talked about Tabuk and where Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu's uh, generosity in Tabuk that we saw that he brought everything from his house. So inshallah, we'll stop here uh, for today's talk. If there's any questions or comments, inshallah, I'll try to uh, answer it if I can.